What's up guys? It was just the night of the night of primaries and what a night it was. We have a lot of results through a bunch of different states, Arizona, Kansas, Michigan, Missouri and Washington. So I'm going to go through all of them, at least those that matter and say what's good, say what's not good. And yes, well, uh, in the state of Washington, first of all, it is the special system where top two primary finishers go on to face a new election in the general, sort of like Louisiana, only than that the jungle primary in Louisiana is in November at election day, while in Washington it is during the primary season. And I'm actually a bit disappointed because a lot of people turned out to vote for Patty Murray. She even got more than 50% of the vote, which shows that there it, it is unusually or surprisingly much support for her in Washington, but Tiffany Smiley easily got the second place, that was never in doubt, so we will see how well she can make that up in the general. So we see here that the next three Republicans uh, together have like seven points between them, so that would put her immediately at like 39. But it's really not too promising for the general, I can say that. Of course you have two very important US House races where it is sort of a more disappointing result for the populist movement. First of all, the results haven't completely come in yet, so Lauren Culp and Joe Kent can still make it up. But right now it looks like the Democratic candidates and the impeachment 10 Republicans, Jamie Herrera Butler and Dan Newhouse, are going to face off in the general, which does not give the right wing of the party too much, well, too much choice really. They will either have to support a Democrat or support a re Republican who they would like to primary. In the 8th district I was also a bit disappointed because Kim Schreier got a lot of votes immediately, she got nearly 50% and that one is uh, actually what I expect to flip to the Republicans. So the next four finishers are Republicans and they get more than 45% of the votes combined. So uh, that means something and there are independents here. But I think Republicans do need a bit more momentum to win. Of course it's only 53% reporting so it can still change. Now that was Washington state, let's go on. Let's actually start in the beginning here at Arizona. And Katie Hobbs easily won the Democratic nomination for governor. But in the Republican primary, Karen Taylor Robson actually led by 10 points in the beginning. But now, Carrie Lake has caught up with her, she is in the lead by nearly 2 points, and the only county actually voting for Robson as we speak is Maricopa County, which of course is very populous. And if you go out into the rural areas, Carrie Lake is like nearly at 50% or over 50% in these counties. It is more of a the Trump area, while of course you can expect Phoenix and Maricopa to be more suburbanite, more favorable to neocons and rhinos, but it's only a 0.8% lead for Robson. But regardless, it is going to be a dogfight, but I think that Karolek is eventually going to win. I mean, she was way back and then she caught up with Robson, so... Uh, I mean, if the late votes go for Lake, then uh, she's probably going to continue to hold on and win eventually. Blake Masters easily won the nomination for center, more than 10 points margin to Jim Lamont, and Mark Burnovich came in a distant third. Also, General McGuire uh, and Justin Olsen did get about what you would expect based on the polling. And Mark Kelly, of course, had no opponents because the Democrats in Arizona and elsewhere are all pussies. So you have Secretary of State Mark Fincham is going to be the next Secretary of State of Arizona. The Democrats have not really decided yet, but I believe that was all that matters. Oh yeah, there are two, two House seats that are probably going to flip to the Republicans. And Eli Crane won the primary against Tom O'Halloran and he is probably going to win that one. And the other one, I believe, is the 6th District. Yes. Kiskomani, uh, Shiskomani or whatever, he is going to be the nominee in this area, this area here, around 
Tucson. It is a district that I believe was about tied, but it is a Republican leaning or even likely district. So we will see, but I mean, he's probably going to win that one without too much trouble. Going to the state of Kansas. Kansas had an abortion referendum which did which did not go too well. I mean, they voted against uh, changing the constitution to allow for bans on abortion, which I guess makes sense. They have they have their democratic rights, and that was that's just why Roe v. Wade was overturned, so that the states and the people would again have the right to decide for themselves if they want abortion legalized or how many weeks they will eventually allow it. So that's that. If you look at the Republican primary, there it was a lot, a lot bigger turnout than in the Democratic primary. Uh, let's see, Derek Schmidt got 363,000, that's more than 100,000 votes more than Laura Kelly did. And the other Republican votes in the primary will eventually go to Schmidt as well, so that one I would say is a likely, if not safe, flip to the GOP, just based off turnout. And yes, here is the referendum, 59% did not want to change that, and uh, you well, can you blame them? Secretary of State, that is going to Scott Schwab. And the last one who I think matters, well, besides from Attorney General, is the US House race in which Republican will face Charisse Davids. And it turns out it's a guy named... Um, no, it's a girl, actually. It's Amanda Atkins. So, yeah, because Davids was uncontested, I don't really know how high the turnout was for her, but it was probably not too high. I think Amanda Atkins will eventually win in the end in that district also. Alright, next one is Michigan. Michigan was an exciting. There was no Senate race, but there was a governorship and a few exciting House races. Tudor Dixon with a Trump endorsement easily won the primary for governor. High turnout for the Republican side, more than a million just for the primary. And if you go to the US House races, this was a big one. John Gibbs defeated Peter Meyer. I know it's a uh, 6% left to report, but it has been called for John Gibbs. He is going to go to the November election, and I believe eventually that he will, I mean, probably win. But if he wins, it's probably only one term, because this district is really democratic. And uh, he might struggle to win in an uh, off year or even a presidential election. And then you have Paul Young, I believe. What district is this? This is the one to face. Yeah, uh, let's see. The 8th district. Kildy. Yes, Daniel Kildy. He was uncontested, but Paul Young will have that one uh, running up against uh, him, her, whatever. He will run against Kildy, and then you have in the 11th district, Haley Stevens defeated and 11, which was sort of this incumbent versus incumbent primary. The one that is not really exciting, because we know who the nominee was going to be, is the 7th district, where Slotkin will face Tom Barrett. He has quite good uh, record on the issues, he's a veteran, he's probably going to win. And then you have John James in the 10th district. I believe he will pull that one off as well. But just because I'm interested, I would like to look at the turnout here. Let's see. 68,000 for the Democrats and the Republicans. 73,000. Okay, so it's not too big. I mean, it was less competitive on the Republican side, but... Uh, but Republicans do seem to have an edge in this district. I mean, it's mostly, mostly Macomb County, Macomb and Oakland and will eventually probably go to John James. Okay, the last state is Missouri. Missouri had a very weird primaries with really four quite solid Republicans. While many of my, I guess, colleagues would argue that Greitens was the best one, I was a bit scared by the polling surrounding Greitens, despite, I mean, the polls doesn't have to be too accurate. I mean, uh, he was, I believe, uh, found. Uh, I believe the charges were eventually dropped on Greitens, but eventually 
the people of Missouri decided to go for Eric Schmidt, who is also quite good and has a lot of good endorsements if you look at it. Yes, he has Ted Cruz, but he also has a Robert O'Brien. I believe he had... Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to look too much into that now. <laughs> Vicky Hartzler, of course, had Josh Hawley. And uh, depending on how you look at it, Greitens and Schmidt both had the endorsement from Trump. But eventually I would say that Greitens got a surprisingly small amount of the vote considering he has been leading in so many polls. But I mean, Schmidt did surge in the end and it paid off. So... When the primary is really matters, if this was in June, we would probably see Hartzler carry this, or maybe Greitens. But, nah. And in the Democratic primary, we have a nobody versus another nobody, and the turnout is very low, and nobody cares. It is going to be a safe red seat from now on. And with these results in, we have a new day in america we are probably going to have a lot of uh, right-wing and america first populists in the senate people like blake masters and jd vance but also people who are very good on the issues even though they are sort of career politicians like adam laxalt and ted budd and now we also have eric schmidt in missouri and of course we have ron johnson in wisconsin so anyways, thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Godspeed.